So my name is Jason Morosco. I work for Ultimate Air out of Athens, Ohio, and we manufacture a ducted energy recovery ventilation unit. Um, in respect to Bright and Green, we um, Bright and Green went for a lot of certification, including Passive House. Um, these regulations in the green low energy building world uh, require very high performance products and we happen to manufacture the highest performing US made energy recovery ventilator on the North American market. Um, that's probably why we're in this building. So a ducted heat recovery ventilator is meant to exchange the inside air with the outside air. Basically a whole house air change. Um, primarily that is for indoor air quality. The, the people living in this building, being a new building, being uh, freshly painted or having uh, anything that off gases and or uh, you know, just their normal indoor air quality it is very important to have an air change normally once every three hours. There are a lot of different parameters, both recommended by ASHRAE, Passive House, LEED, uh, about how much ventilation is required. But so your intent is to exchange the inside air with the outside air once every three hours for good indoor air quality. You know, when we build a very tight, uh, generally a tight energy efficient structure, we are lowering the amount of air changes inside, thereby trapping any potential uh, hazardous breathing air inside for the occupants. So ventilation is meant to exchange that with the outside on a regular basis. And all ventilation costs money. I mean, unless you live in a climate that the outside condition is exactly what you like inside all of the time, any type of air change inside of the building is going to cost money. So, you know, you could, the two extremes would be, well, open all the windows to do the air change, and then the opposite, the most efficient means of exchanging the inside air with the outside air would be to do it with a device such as ours and we happen to be the best at what we do, so it is going to cost you the least amount of money to exchange that, to get that fresh air exchange every three hours. So the way that we do it and the way that is unique about our product is we have a patented rotary matrix heat exchanger inside the device. So the device is pulling air out of the contaminated places in the house, specifically bathrooms, kitchen, and it is pushing fresh air into the living spaces, the living room, bedroom, and it's providing that whole air change. So, and for this space, these are between four and 800 square foot apartments. Um, you need anywhere from 30 to maybe 120 cubic feet per minute of air change. And again, it can be driven by how many people are in the house, what are you doing in the house, are you cooking, you know, when you're cooking you need maybe more ventilation. And we have this product wired in this situation to provide a base load of ventilation, a, a low, low, you know, low operation ventilation. But then when you start cooking, when you are in the bathroom making the humidity, uh, and or when you have multiple people in the house, we have devices that will trigger the ventilation to be increased only during that time. Uh, again, ventilation always costs money. So you're trying to ventilate at the rate that will sustain a good indoor air quality, but not over. Because any over ventilation just costs money. So both in the performance of the equipment at exchanging heat between the two airstreams, also, um, need to um, control the rate according to what type of indoor contaminants are being produced at the time. In other words, um, the maximum flow rate might be 120 CFM, but that is only necessary when uh, there, might, uh, there are six people in the apartment or uh, the shower's going and you're cooking at the same time. So you know, those are the contaminants being produced at the time, so it's necessary to increase the ventilation.
they did this as a model project. I know they were going for a living building challenge, lead and passive house, probably among others. I don't think every project needs to adhere to all three of the standards, but they were going for let's let's do them all, let's demonstrate all of the all of the current cutting edge green technology available and that's awesome. There are different factors associated with the three of those and I most certainly feel uh, multifamily residential is going to be affected by this project, and it should be. Within those certifications, um, there are many factors uh, pertaining to the indoor air quality and the impact on the inhabitants, such as uh, pristine indoor air quality. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it coming from the fact that you're going to have ventilation all the time. You're going to do a third of an air change an hour. Um, another impact would be the types of materials that are mandated or required. Like you can't do, you can't use a lot of high formaldehyde content materials. The paints are probably very very <laughs> or a lot better for you than any other. The construction method in general uh, is going to lead to less less contaminants being off-gassed into the premises and then with the ventilation it you know should lead to a much better indoor air quality all around. Ultimate Air itself and me personally, I said I became Passive House certified. So as far as my career choice, and I'm an engineer, uh, absolutely. And we have, we have always been uh, Ultimate Air. We have always been on the cutting edge of, you know, high performance energy recovery ventilation. Now, the market for that in the United States is still small, but growing leaps and bounds. And of course. Bright and green should be a, a large step in that direction. The uh, passive house standard. The passive house standard really focuses on energy efficiency of the shell. Um, a lot of the features also incorporated in this building are things that could be added later but the design and con the design of the shell and the construction of the shell is something that you're not going to easily change. And I feel it's very important to get that right the first time. And then, you know, so that, that is the most exciting thing about this. It's a, it's a multifamily, it's in New York City, and it is going to make it to a passive house level shell design. Living in this building. It would be awesome, absolutely. Um, living in New York City, uh, the green spaces that were created, even within the city, yeah, within the city itself, the uh, according to a lot of the lead standard on rainwater harvest, and just knowing I was owner or living in a building that was built that is going to save and have a such a high impact carbon neutral or carbon footprint so small, I, I absolutely would love to live in this building. <laughs> oh, no, I'm from Athens, Ohio, a very small town, uh, southeastern Ohio. Uh, college town, granted. Only been to New York a few times, uh, <laughs> probably for this project. Um, but, oh, working with Robert, Robert's a very passionate person. Uh, the owner of Ultimate Air, very passionate. I am very passionate. Uh, it takes passion to get these kinds of things done, and I'm very glad that it happened.